Hello everyone, welcome to the class on glycolysis. In this video, I am going to explain about why glucose is considered to give instant energy and how it can give us instant energy. Next one, what are the metabolic conversions of glucose that takes place in a cell? And then glycolysis, interesting facts and how the pathway goes on. The last one, phosphorylated intermediates, there are 9 phosphorylated intermediates in glycolysis and what is the logic behind that phosphorylated intermediates. Now this is my YouTube channel, if you like the video contents, do subscribe. Let's get into the topic. Now importance of glucose, see glucose is considered to give instant energy. The reason why it is considered to give instant energy is when the glucose powder is mixed in water and it is taken, it gets immediately absorbed into the blood. See, it, it will not further undergo any digestion, it is already the final digested product and when it is given, it directly gets into the blood. When it gets into the blood, it undergoes metabolic transformations like glycolysis and immediately produces ATP. ATP is the energy currents for the human cells. That is the reason why it is considered to provide instant energy. Even when people give, become very sick and they, and they are very weak, they are administered a 5% weight by volume dextrose. Dextrose is nothing but D-isomer of glucose. This is given to increase the patient's energy levels. So this is the significance and the reason why it is, the reason why it is preferred is it provides instant energy. Now coming to the next one, see glucose complete oxidation yields 2840 kilojoules per mole. See glucose is a C6H12O6 molecule. Complete oxygen oxidation means it is completely converted to carbon dioxide. So see this is what happens in our human body. When we take all sorts of carbohydrates they are converted to glucose a simple molecule in, in the digestion process and that glucose is completely oxidized inside the cells and carbon dioxide is released and this is what we exhale. This is what comes out of our body. But during this process, it releases energy which is equivalent to 2840 kilojoules per mole. So because of this one, glucose becomes a major source of energy molecule. That is the reason why we take a lot of carbohydrates to get energy. Now the next one, glucose can be stored as glycogen with a relatively low cytosolic osmolarity. See when glucose molecules all of them can come together almost 1 lakh molecules can come together and polymerize to give glycogen. Glycogen can be stored as a fuel molecule. Now storing glycogen will not increase osmolality of the cell. Uh, see if osmotic gradient is increased cell survival will become difficult but that will not happen when glucose is converted to glycogen and so again this is the one of the importance of glucose. Now last but not the least Glucose produces ATP either aerobically or anaerobically. See aerobically means in presence of oxygen. In presence of oxygen cells will undergo certain metabolic transformations like glycolysis. Glycolysis in which glucose is broken down to pyruvate and then citric acid cycle and after that citric acid cycle oxidative phosphorylation. So all these metabolic pathways will provide us ATP but citric acid cycle oxidative phosphorylation usually happens in presence of oxygen. See in oxidative phosphorylation if oxygen is there then only phosphorylation occurs and ATP will get produced. But glycolysis can occur in anaerobically, anaerobically means it does not require oxygen. So in glycolysis glucose is cleaved to give pyruvate and it produces ATP. That means glucose can produce ATP either in presence of oxygen or in absence of oxygen. This is important one. Why? Because when you are continuously working, there occurs a condition called as hypoxia. Hypoxia means decreased oxygen levels in the tissues. In such conditions also body can get ATP or energy with glucose. So this is another importance of glucose. So these are all the four uh, important things with glucose. Moving to further, see metabolic fates of glucose. Glucose can undergo oxidation via glycolysis and gives pyruvate. This is what we now just discussed. This is what gives ATP even without oxygen. Now glucose can also undergo oxidation via pentose phosphate pathway and gives ribose 5-phosphate. You can see this, ribose 5-phosphate, all of them will, will, will get converted into DNA. DNA has got a ribose sugar. 
I'm sorry, RNA has got ribose sugar. When an oxygen is removed from ribose, it becomes deoxyribose. So both RNA and DNA new, uh, molecules can be synthesized from this pathway. Now, next one, it can be stored in the form of glycogen, starch and st sucrose. In human beings, glycogen is the major storage molecule, whereas in plants, starch is the major storage molecule. Whereas it can synthesize various structural polymers which can act as extracellular matrix and cell wall polysaccharides. So it is required for structural molecules, it is required for a storage fuel molecule and oxidation will provide ATP and the DNA, RNA molecules are also synthesized from glucose conversions. So these are all the important metabolic conversion fates of glucose. Moving to the next one. Now glycolysis, this process takes place in cell cytoplasm just in cell cytoplasm. In most of the living organisms, glycolysis is a very common pathway. Now, what happens in this glycolysis is, see lysis means breakdown, Glyx, glysis means sweet or sugar. So sugar breakdown is nothing but glycolysis. What happens in this glycolysis is, glucose is converted to pyruvate. Glucose has got six carbon molecules, whereas pyruvate is three carbon molecules. Two molecules means it is split into two three carbon containing pyruvates. Now not only this what happens NAD is converted to NADH and H plus. Now understand what is happening. So NAD is taking up hydrogens from this glucose. Removal of hydrogen is nothing but oxidation. So, so this is an oxidation process why NAD is getting converted to NADH and H plus and hydrogens are taken from glucose. Now ADP combines with a phosphate and gives ATP. This is energy yielding one. So this is the reason why we call it as glucose gives instant energy. So the overall reaction is a glucose molecule is converted to two pyruvates, two NAD plus are converted to two NADH and H plus and ADP, two ADPs are converted to two ATP. Now this is briefly what is glycolysis is. Now when you see the importance of glycolysis, look at this, the glycolytic breakdown of glucose is sole source of metabolic energy in some tissues like erythrocytes, renal medulla, brain and sperm. See this is important one. Erythrocytes do not have a nucleus, do not have mitochondria. If mitochondria is not there, citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation will not occur. So in the cytoplasm only glycolysis occur and from only glycolysis it gets ATP. So red blood cells are completely depend upon glucose to get energy. Not only that, even in brain. See, for human body, the metabolic fuel sources are carbohydrates and lipids. Lipids cannot easily get into the brain. So only carbohydrates like glucose get into the brain. So brain is mostly depend upon glucose to get energy. Similarly, sperm and renal medulla also, the sole source of energy is glycolysis. This is the significance of glycolysis. Now let us see briefly what happens in glycolysis. It all starts with the glucose. Glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate. That means on the 6th carbon, a phosphate group is attached, so this process is phosphorylation. But the important thing is, it is consuming ATP energy. Once glucose 6-phosphate is formed, it is isomerized. So glucose is converted to fructose, both of them are isomers. Glucose is an aldehyde derivative, whereas fructose is keto derivative, ketohexose. Glucose is aldohexose. Now again, after that, one more phosphorylation takes place. That means an ATP is consumed and fructose gets 2-phosphate, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Now here this is the main step of lysis. The 6 carbon fructose is converted to 3 carbon glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and 3 carbon dihydroxyestone phosphate. But you can see both of them can interconvert and dihydroxyestone phosphate is again converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. That means with this step you will be getting 2 molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Remember this is the actual lysis step. Now when these two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates are converted to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now understand this, this step is considered as generating high energy compound. The reason why 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is considered as high energy compound is, with this high energy compounds, ATP can be produced. Look at this, when 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted to 3-phosphoglycerate, it is releasing ATP. So remember, anything which can produce ATP is considered as high energy compound. Not only that, this step is known as substrate level phosphorylation. Compare and contrast with oxidative phosphorylation. Now oxidative phosphorylation means oxidation happens at the same time phosphorylation also happens. Now oxidative phosphorylation occurs in mitochondria. So this is the major pathway through which ATP is produced. 
Now, without oxidation also, from the substrate, phosphorylation occurs. See, from this substrate called 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, from this substrate, 3 phosphoglycerate is converted and it releases ATP energy because from the substrate itself phosphorylation is happening it is called substrate level phosphorylation again important one. Now after that this 3 phosphoglycerate is converted to 2 phosphoglycerate a, a, a reaction known as rearrangement. Now again this 2 phosphoglycerate again gets converted to phosphoenol pyruvate again this one is high energy compound understand this the moment you someone says high energy compound it is releasing ATP. So this is high energy compound generation and it is releasing ATP again when ATP is getting released from substrate itself not from mitochondria not from oxidation it is called substrate level phosphorylation and finally it forms pyruvate. See here it is 2 glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate molecules and hence it is two pyruvate molecules. So, this is a simple conversion of glycolysis to understand simply what all the steps are there you can go through this. Now, when you see the real conversion you can see with the enzymes glucose is a hexose with the help of hexokinase. Kinase means any phosphate transfer carried out with the help of kinase enzyme. So, glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate. Again isomerase phospho hexo isomerase fructose 6 phosphate is formed. Now, to fructose 6 phosphate one more a phosphate is attached, so kinase, phosphofructokinase, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is formed. It is cleaved. As I told you, this is the real lysis reaction. In glycolysis, the real cleavage occurs here and it forms glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Now, this uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is also converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Hence, you will be getting two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now, this one is converted to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Look at this, what is happening? This is the step wherein NAD is converted to NADH and H plus. That means hydrogens are extracted from glyceraldehyde. Look at this structure, this hydrogen is removed. See, hydrogen is removed. So, hence the enzyme is dehydrogenase, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. In this step, NADH and H plus are formed. Now, after this, again, if you remember, this is a high energy compound which releases ATP. So, ATP transfer means kinase. Again, this step is known as substrate level phosphorylation because ATP is produced from the substrate. Now, this 3-phosphoglycerate is converted to 2-phosphoglycerate with the help of an enzyme mutase. Now, this 2-phosphoglycerate is dehydrated, water is removed and phosphoenol pyruvate is formed. Again, phosphoenol pyruvate is high energy compound which will, re which will release as ATP. This step is substrate level phosphorylation and finally, it forms 2 pyruvates. So, this is what is glycolysis is. Uh, see, at the at the first stage, ATP is consumed, ATP is used, hence it is known as a preparatory phase. The second phase, ATP is released, you can see ATPs are getting released, they are coming out of the reaction, hence they are known as payoff phase. So, glycolysis can be divided into preparatory phase and payoff phase. Now, the last one, importance of phosphorylated intermediates. You can see in among all the pathway leaving this glucose and the final product pyruvate, all other intermediates are phosphate derivatives. Everywhere you can see the presence of C, the phosphate. Everywhere you can see the presence of phosphate. All the intermediate has got phosphates. There is an importance for this one. What is importance? Phosphorylated sugars cannot leave the cell. See, from the blood, when glucose is carried, the glucose gets into the cells. Once inside the cell, the glucose is trapped because it is phosphorylated. Phosphate has got a negative charge which cannot move out of the cell. So, the cell is trapping glucose inside the cell by phosphorylation and all the steps will go on and glycolysis goes till the end. So, this is one of the important. Second one, high energy phosphate compounds are, compounds are formed as we have seen 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and phosphoenol pyruvate. Both of them are phosphorylated compounds which are high energy compounds, they will release ATP. Now, the last one, phosphate groups form complex with magnesium. See, magnesium is a cofactor which helps in enzyme function. You can see this. This is again glycolysis pathway. For all the reactions, they need the support of magnesium. You can see this. This is one reaction wherein magnesium. Again, here it needs magnesium, the reaction. Here also it needs magnesium. Here also it needs magnesium. Here also it needs magnesium. Out of 10 steps, 5 steps requires the help of magnesium. When phosphate is there because of its negative charge, it combines with magnesium, it goes and attaches to that enzyme containing magnesium and the reaction takes place easily. So, phosphate complexes with magnesium and what happens? The substrate is taken towards enzyme containing magnesium, reaction goes smoothly. So, these are all the importance of 
phosphorylated intermediates. So this is about glycolysis and all the logics of glycolysis. Thank you for watching this video.